Doctors of Reddit, what was the craziest case of patient paranoia that you have ever seen? My father was a doctor, dermatologist, had a patient who accused him of prescribing a non-existent experimental drug for a supposed condition that he was never diagnosed with, tried to take him to court and lost, sent a threatening letter after, reported to police. After the police confronted him about it, he dropped a homemade fruit basket with a single bullet on top of the fruit at the front step of the office addressed, but not postmarked to my father with a creepy unsigned apology note, basket was immediately shown to police. About a month later my father received a letter from the guy stating he had seen my name in the paper sports section local golf tournament results, and that he knew I would be playing at an upcoming tournament, where the start times were published. There was a police presence at the tournament, something that never happens, because my father reported it. My dad's nurse's husband was a local detective and pretty much followed me the whole day with my dad. The police found the guy in the parking lot unarmed, and he was arrested, then eventually committed to a psych hospital for some time. There's still a restraining order against him to this day but this was over 15 years ago, and the guy seems to have disappeared. I didn't know any of this until about 5 years ago, but I remember my dad having a single bullet in his bedside table, even though he never owned any guns. When I asked him about it all he would say was someone gave it to me. Surgical nurse here had a patient return to the or who had some hardware plates and screws put in their elbow for a fracture. The hardware was causing them discomfort so instead of talking to her surgeon they decided to try and remove one of the sous with a knife and screwdriver. I got the case for the wound cleanup and replacement of said exposed screw, one of the strangest ones I've had yet. My wife is a clinician and had a person come in with the idea that Donald Trump's Twitter feed it was actually an alien artificial intelligence that infects everyone who reads it. I really like that one. Patient's mother didn't want son to get vaccinated because she thought vaccinations created superbugs that couldn't be treated. Many many moons ago, when I was a student nurse, I was caring for a man over Easter. He had been hallucinating wildly, thrashing around and seeing rabbits all over the ward an old fashioned open ward. He had delirium tremens from alcohol withdrawal, we were administering large amounts of intravenous sedation hem and everin to keep him calm and things were going well. Until the night sister came bouncing in at 3am dressed as the Easter Bunny, ears and all. His face was a picture, we couldn't get her out fast enough. Paramedic. Had a guy refuse an EKG for his 10 tenths left sided crushing chest pain, because they caused heart attacks. When I asked him why he thought that he said all of his friends who died of heart attacks had won, and that he was wise to our EKG conspiracy to give people heart disease and raise money for Big Pharma. Not really paranoia, but delusion or dementia. My mum used to work in the office on a psychiatric ward. One of the patients would come to the office window every single day, ask for a bus ticket, and pay for it with a penny toffee. They would pass him a raffle ticket and he would spend the rest of the day sat on a bench in the reception area waiting for a bus. Every night after he went to sleep the staff would put the penny toffee back on his bedside table. I always thought it was really sweet of them to keep up the charade. Paramedic here, not the craziest, but the one that always gives me a chuckle. I was transporting a paranoid schizophrenic patient who kept shouting at me that I was an agent of the government who was out to get him. I couldn't really disagree with him as I was a government employee, and I was there to get him. I'm a physiotherapist UK, I was on my first placement as a student. A patient who had a hip replacement was delirious post opus. They were convinced they'd not had an operation in the night after having it, they tried to get in bed with another patient, after stripping off all their clothes. They threatened to get their partner involved who was an ex-lawyer, because we said and Zray was needed to check the prosthetic as they weren't following precautions, but the patient didn't think they had anything wrong with them. When they came round fully and was discharged they said I'm really sorry, but I think I went a bit crazy these last few days. This was when I went abroad to France for a clerkship in psychiatry. I had learned French in high school hence, had a horrible American accent. Once I arrived to the ward they told me a general description of all the patients. 
they mentioned there was an American patient whom they had found on the streets who claimed he had escaped to France since the I slash FBI was looking for him. When the patient heard me speaking to other colleagues he thought I was an American secret agent coming for him. This sparked a psychiatric episode and caused great stress. This one lady was almost certain that vaccines cause autism and won't get her child vaccinated despite all of her intensive web and research it's almost like a doctor no more than a middle aged soccer mom. I currently have a patient who believes he is an undercover police officer and has been sent to infiltrate my traumatic brain injury clinic. Brain injury is interesting. Clint Eastwood has a reattraining order against my father. My father is convinced Clint is his dad. He has gone to his home and harassed him quite a bit. My gran had patient paranoia a few months before she died. I was around 13, so I wasn't told but recently, as I'm studying psychosis at school, so my parents told me. Apparently, she believed that the doctor tortured guinea pigs in front of her as she was getting medication. It was really sad, because I remember her being so nice and gentle and definitely not someone that could have been suffering, but we don't know what caused this paranoia as she was good friends with the nurse. Dentist here. Patient asked me if I had placed a tracking device in her crown. The patient was probably me. I used to go to my doctor for every problem, every little bruise, every little itch, and every time, it turned out to be nothing. Nothing wrong with me at all. Finally, my doctor suggested my next visit should be to a psychiatrist. I've tried to cool down my illness paranoia since then. I once spent a community group for clients attending a psychiatric day hospital discussing and commiserating with a lady over the theft of her parrot by a small boy who had broken into her house. Turns out this was her delusion. All the other clients knew this, but joined in as though it was real. Joke was on me as the therapist running the group. My grandma was a nurse in a psychiatric institution. She told me she once had a patient who was persuaded to have been decapitated and would call herself Jean de France in reference to Joan of Arc I guess. I had a patient accuse me of putting RF radio frequency trackers in her because she saw them on her chest's ray. She came to our department and demanded I admit to it. They were the metal clasps on her bra. My mom was a supervisor in a nursing home at the time, but she would help during the daily activities with the dementia patients. After they had finished that day's activity and they started to go back to their rooms, one little old lady is screaming at the top of her lungs. My mom rushed to her asking what's wrong what did she need. This lady explains how someone behind the food counter is beating a dog and she hears it howling. My mom is confused because nobody is beating a dog anywhere and nobody is behind the food counter. So she goes behind the counter and mouths some random words the lady had hearing problems and points at the door for this man to leave. My mom then walks over to the lady to calm her down because she is crying at this point. The lady tells my mom to help the dog so she pretends to pick up this dog and bring him out of the room. My mom then brings the lady to her room and helps her in bed and she is still upset about it. My mom asks all these questions about if she's okay and what did the dog look like, if she had any dogs, when she was younger to try and get her in a better mood. Nothing worked, the lady said the dog was a golden retriever and so as it happened we had two golden retrievers at home. So she got a call from the night supervisor that this lady can't sleep and all she wants is the dog to be okay and happy. So my mom calls to head director of the nursing home if she can bring in one of our golden retrievers to comfort this lady after a sleepless night and the head director said no after a few night. If she can't sleep she'll think about my mom bringing in a dog most likely, not because of health risks to patients. After a few sleepless nights of thus poor lady my mom is allowed to bring in our dog and hangs out with this lady the whole day and she is so happy the entire day and she said she hasn't had that good of a sleep after that day in forever. Whenever I think about this story it gets me so happy. I have an uncle who's a doctor in Kentucky. He gets regular patients who are intensely paranoid. They are obsessed with open carrying a gun on their hip for what they say is self-defense. No matter how much you tell them that the rest of the world lives fine with the same risk, it makes no difference to them. Oftentimes they own numerous guns and stockpile ammunition. 
most of them also mumble incoherent statements about the Constitution and the Second Amendment, which they pretend to deeply care about in order to justify their insanity. Bizarre.